It's August 2021 and the tech world is expecting Apple to release the M1X MacBook Pros very soon, like around September, October, November, December timeframe. Yet here I am in August, I just bought the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. In this video, I'll share with you in the shortest, simplest way possible, two reasons why I think you should buy the M1 MacBook Pro now instead of waiting for the M1X MacBook Pros that is to be released soon. Let me start with what I think is the most important reason and that is the cost. The upcoming MacBooks, according to the many leaks and rumors and articles that I've watched and read, and also according to my personal opinion, is that it's going to be expensive. If we take a look at the MacBook Pro lineup, it has two levels. The baseline two-port models starts at 1299, and then the next level four-port model starts at 1799. Right now, the two-port 1299 model is occupied by the M1 MacBook Pros released November last year. And that leaves the four port 1799 models waiting for the Apple Silicon treatment. And that is where I think the upcoming MacBooks fit. I think it's unlikely that Apple will release a base model MacBook this year for two reasons. First is that the MacBook Air and MacBook Pros are very well received and very well ahead of its competition. And second, Apple is on their second year of Apple Silicon transition, meaning they will prioritize their M1 Max lineup first before iterating over the base models. If you look at what they've released so far, those are only the starting or the base model uh, M1 MacBooks. Also, the expected upcoming features such as the bezel-less mini LED display, the return of MagSafe, the return of legacy ports such as HDMI and SD card slot, and the redesigned chassis, those are very valid reasons for Apple to jack up the price. And considering how well demanded these features are ever since the 2016 redesign. Still on the topic of cost, since the M1 MacBooks have been in the market for like around 8 months now, that means you can find these MacBooks on sale or discounted, making these MacBooks even more bang for the buck. Check your local markets for appropriate pricing. As a reference, the US seems to be enjoying a 10-15% to discount on MacBooks as seen in Amazon and Best Buy, etc. Here in the Philippines, the cheapest that I found is 60,000 Philippine pesos for MacBook Pro and 49,000 Philippine pesos for MacBook Air. It's not as cheap as the US pricing, but it's definitely a huge savings from the local mall pricing of like 73,000 Philippine pesos for MacBook Pro and like 57,000 for MacBook Air. Also note that there is education pricing for most, if not all, Apple stores or authorized resellers or retailers, make sure to avail their pricing to save yourself around 100 bucks. And as far as I've read from many regions, they don't actually verify if you're a student or a professor, so anyone can just avail of that pricing. So if you wanna save a couple hundred bucks while still getting a really, really good laptop, then the M1 MacBooks are a great option. All right, so the second reason is that the fact that the M1 MacBooks are actually really great laptops for its price. First, the M1 performance beats most, if not all, of the laptops in this price range. As a quick reference, according to benchmarks, the M1 beats the 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor. And to get this performance on an alternative laptop, you would have to pay roughly more than the M1 MacBook Air or the M1 MacBook Pro. The Apple Silicon M1 SoCs really took the base model entry-level MacBooks from great to freaking awesome. Second, battery life and power efficiency is crazy on the M1 MacBooks. You get 14 to 18 hours of battery life. Name another laptop that has this crazy battery life, can perform 100% of its performance, even on battery power, be as sleek, thin, and aesthetically great, and yet still be silent and very cool under load. Number three, the keyboard is actually great. They've got it right this time. Unlike the 2016 to 2019 um, butterfly keyboards, which was generally problematic, this one, this time, they got it right. To me, it's like a perfect mix of the 2015 scissor mechanism keyboards and the 2019 butterfly mechanism keyboards. It has a good treble, just slightly lower than the 2015 scissor mechanism keys. It has light actuation force and a satisfying tactile feedback. In my experience, the 2020 scissor mechanism keys are way better than the 2015 scissor mechanism keys. And the rest of the laptop is just really great. You get the large industry leading force touch trackpad. If you haven't used a force touch trackpad before, I think it's gonna change your opinion on trackpads. Just try it out. You get loud, high quality, high definition speakers. You get studio quality built-in microphone, which is really important these days. 
And lastly, you got great build quality and superior aesthetics. And there's the touch bar, which I understand some people hate, but so far, I actually find it useful. So if there's nothing that you really dislike about the Amon MacBooks right now, then I'd say you won't really get much value for waiting for months and for paying for much higher for the M1X MacBook Pros. And that's what I honestly think about the entire discussion on buy now or wait for the M1X MacBooks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this. If you agree to the points that I've raised on this video, hit that like button so others is also in the verge of just buying or waiting can also see this video. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next one.